Hello and welcome to the Lucion video tutorial series. In this video we'll be going over the basics of scanning. Now the first thing that we want you to understand is that in File Center scanning isn't an afterthought. It's deeply integrated into File Center. Anywhere in File Center that you see the scan button up here on the main toolbar you can scan. For example here in my PDF editor I can scan pages in to create a new PDF document or if I have a PDF open I can scan in pages and add them onto that PDF file. If I switch over to the Manage view, I can scan a document directly into any drawer or folder. And if I have a PDF file selected, I can scan additional pages right into that file without even having to open it. In fact, even if I choose to use the Explorer view instead of the Cabinet view, a regular Windows Explorer interface inside a file center, I can scan documents directly into whatever location I'm at inside of Windows Explorer. So scanning really is available through nearly any part of File Center and it's really a powerful and integral part of File Center. Now I'm going to switch back over to the PDF editor and we're going to do a couple of sample scans just so that you can see how it works. What I'm going to do is scan a three page document right here into the PDF editor and that will create a new PDF document for me. The first step is to click the scan button up on the main toolbar and whenever you scan you're going to see this dialog box and it's got a lot of options on it. We'll be explaining most of these options in this video and in subsequent videos in the scanning video tutorial series. For right now, I'm just going to accept all of the defaults as they are and click Start Scan. And there we go, File Center pulled the document in from my scanner and it looks pretty good. I can use the thumbnails over here on the left to inspect each one of the pages. Uh, if there's anything on the pages I don't like, I do have this button up here on the main toolbar, Edit PDF Image, and that will pull the current page up in a special little image editor where I can erase artifacts or crop the image down straight and I do a number of little edits. Uh, but for right now I think this looks pretty good. So when I'm done, all I need to do is push Save and I can save this out into my cabinets. I'm going to call this New PDF, or New Will. And there we go. Now let's switch over to the cabinet view and see how the same thing is done scanning directly into my file cabinet. Okay, here I am in my cabinet view and I've selected this client's drawer and a scans folder and I'm going to scan that same three page document directly into this drawer. Now just as before, I click the Scan button, and I have a new section of options this time, a file name field right here. We need to have a file name because we're going to be scanning this directly to a file. When you're scanning into your cabinets, it's a very rapid way to scan and to file in one easy step. So from the beginning, I need to give this a file name, and I'll use the same file name I used before, New Will. And I've also got a keywords field right here. I can put some keywords in here if I want to to make this searchable. Those keywords will be associated with that file and when I do a search later to try to bring this document up, uh, File Center will search on those keywords. I'm going to leave that blank for right now and I'm just going to go ahead and click Start Scan. And there it is, scanned, named, and filed away in one easy step. Now if I want to take a look at what that scan looks like, I can use my preview window. I can just pop that open in the preview and I can scan down through the pages. Take a look and make sure that everything is just the way I want it. If it turns out that there's a problem if I want to edit it, I can open this up in my PDF editor, open in File Center right there, and make some changes to it and save it back out. But if most of your scans come in nice and clean and you don't feel like you need to do any editing, this is a much faster way to scan. Now let's go back to the scanning dialog and talk about a few of those options. The first section of options here on the scanning dialog is the action section. This is where you choose what type of a scan you're going to be performing. And most of the time that's going to be new scan. New scan simply means you're creating a new document, a new fresh document as opposed to some of these other options 
where you attach new pages onto an existing scan. And we'll be talking about these in an upcoming video. And we'll also discuss scanning to Word, where you can send a scan, or at least the text from the scan, directly to your word processor. One other option you may use from time to time is scan to email, which we're not going to demonstrate here. But if you select this option, your scan, instead of being saved into File Center, will be popped open attached to a new email message ready for you to send to somebody. Now the next option we want to look at is the scanner option right here. Notice this little button to the right side of the scanner field. If I click this, this allows me to select which scanner I'm going to be using to scan into File Center, or more correctly, which scanning driver. For example, I only have one scanner connected to my machine right now. It's this Epson scanner. But I have two different Epson drivers there. That's because Windows often creates a second driver here, the WIA driver. Now, if you're faced with this situation, we typically recommend that you select the one that does not have WIA in the name and try that one first. It's usually going to give you the best results, but occasionally you may need to select this one that has WIA in the name. Now, if you have more than one scanner selected to your machine, connected to your machine, of course, you can select your scanner here and hit Select. Now, what if the scanner you want to use isn't showing up on that list? Well, a number of things could cause that. It may be that your scanner isn't plugged into your machine, it's not turned on, or you don't have a driver installed for that scanner that will let it work with File Center. It's called a Twain driver. Now, take a look at our scanning troubleshooting video, and it can help you resolve a lot of these problems. But I will pause right now and make special mention of ScanSnap scanners made by Fujitsu. Uh, these are fantastic little scanners, but they do not come with a driver that lets File Center work with them. Now, if you take a look at our user guide, uh, we have a special section in there that tells you how to use a ScanSnap scanner with File Center. So go over there if you're using a ScanSnap, and you can still use your ScanSnap with File Center, but you've got to do things a little bit differently. Finally, let's take a look at this group of options down here, because these control the key characteristics of your scan. The first option is your scan type. And what this means is this is the kind of file that your scan will be saved to. By default, that's going to be a PDF file, which is really the one that we recommend for all of your document scanning. It's really become the new standard because it has a true, faithful reproduction of the original document, but it can also be searched if you perform OCR along with your scan. And we'll talk about that in some other videos. The second option here, TIFF, this used to be the way that we would save scans, into a TIFF file, a TIFF image file. And there are some locations that still prefer to use TIFF. That's available to you if you'd like to use it. And the last option is JPEG, which is really for scanning digital photos. It's going to give you a good image of your digital photo. Uh, you really don't want to be scanning your digital photos into PDF files. Choose JPEG for those instead. Now the color option chooses how much color will, will be available inside of your scan. Now for document scanning, the default is going to be black and white, which is really what we recommend, because most documents look fine in just black and white, and that's going to produce a much smaller file when it's saved to your disk. Now if your original document has color in it, you could move up to grayscale, which is going to show the colors in shades of gray instead of black and white, or you could go up to full color. But be aware that as you go down this list, each option produces a bigger file than the one before it. And if you're scanning a large document in 24-bit color, uh, when you save this document to disk, it's going to be a very, very large file. So choose the one that strikes the best balance for you. And I will note that a few of these options, especially the 4-bit and 8-bit color, may not be available on your scanner. We put them on the list here in File Center, but not all scanners support all of these color options. So you'll have to experiment a little bit. But again, for most document scanning, we recommend black and white. Now the next option, DPI, also touches directly on file size. DPI is the resolution of your scan. It's how much fine detail there is in the scan. And the more fine detail you allow, the bigger your file size is going to end up being. Now for document scanning, we default to 300 by 300. This is a good resolution if you're going to be printing this document ever in the future. Now if you find that you want your documents to be a little bit sharper, you could move up to some of the other resolutions. However, we'll also note that if you'll only ever be looking at this document on your computer display and you never have any chance of printing this in the future, you might go down. 
200 or 100 DPI is actually just fine for looking at a document on a computer monitor. It really just depends on what you want to do. But again, the default that uh, we like to recommend is 300 DPI. It strikes a great balance between file size and printability. Now the last option is your paper size. Uh, here's where you select the size of your original. The default is going to be U.S. letter, or if you're in a European country, it's probably going to be A4. Uh, but you can pick another size. For example, you could do a uh, U.S. legal size if you're scanning in legal size originals. And this is going to give you a legal sized PDF page once the scan is done. Now we've got a lot of other options available here on the scanning dialog box, which can make some wonderful improvements to the way that you scan. We encourage you to take a look at those as we describe them in the upcoming videos in the scanning video series.